Hanukkah Sameach. Happy Hanukkah, Kasorians. Welcome to our Hanukkah special. Today we'll be making challah bread in the air fryer. If you'd like to become a part of our Kasori community, hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell icon to be notified of our weekly videos that we release every Thursday and for every video we upload. We're going to start by naming all of our ingredients for the challah bread today. You're gonna to start off with a pound of bread flour. And then we also have six grams of instant active yeast here. So we're just gonna go directly into the bowl. You wanna mix it so it's mi distributed evenly throughout the flour. And because it's instant, you do not need to activate the yeast today. So it's gonna make this recipe even easier, even faster, and it's gonna be really great for your traditional Hanukkah meal. Then, directly into the bowl, make sure you always remove your attachments first. Oops, yeah. We're going to have eight grams of kosher salt, 46 grams of white granulated sugar, and just always have your spatula handy. We're gonna have 46 grams of any type of vegetable oil. I'm using grapeseed oil because it's extremely neutral and you can't taste it. So we're gonna go in here and just make sure you scrape the bowl so all of the oil gets into your stand mixer. And then we're gonna add in six ounces of water. and 90 grams of egg yolks. This is about five egg yolks minus like an eighth of a teaspoon. If you have a kitchen scale at home, I highly recommend weighing out all of your measurements, especially for making bread. It'll just make your life a lot easier and make sure, and it just basically ensures a foolproof challah bread. Now that the wet ingredients are in the bowl, we're going to slowly pour in the one pound of bread flour and your instant yeast. This is pretty cool because normally bread and yeast activation, you need to separate the dry and the liquid so that the yeast can activate. But because we're using instant dry yeast and it activates you know, instantly, so it's gonna be really good. You don't need a challah at your challah bread. Yeah. I'm gonna do that. And this next step is really important. If you have one of these stand mixers at home, you wanna make sure it's completely locked after you put in your attachment. So we're gonna use a dough hook. We're going to start off at low speed. And if you have a 10 speed kitchen stand mixer, you're gonna wanna lock your bowl. Make sure all the bowls are locked in place. We're gonna start on low speed, I'm using speed two today. We're gonna to do that for four minutes exactly. And then we're going to do medium speed, so about six uh, for another four minutes. The dough is gonna to pull together. It's going to become pretty hard and not loose. It's gonna look really sticky, but don't worry, don't touch it. The mixer will do the work for you. It'll knead it for you. And after a full eight minutes, the gluten will have completely developed and it'll be really firm slightly tacky ball. We're going to oil the bowl with some oil spray and then let it proof for an hour. All right, here we go. So our bread has just finally pulled together. It's looking really good. I'm going to lower the stand mixer now to show you guys. you take it completely out of the bowl. It's okay if it sticks like this, that's no problem. I'm gonna pull it off the hook attachment. And right before we put it into the separate bowl, you're gonna wanna give it a quick spray. This just makes sure that the ball of dough will not stick to your bowl and makes it easier for you to take the proof dough out afterwards. So this is the kind of the consistency you want to look for. It's still kind of tacky, but it's elastic enough for the dough to fully pop up. The gluten has completely developed. 
and you're gonna want to plastic wrap it but good thing I have one already made for us so this is gonna go away and it's gonna let it we're gonna let it rest and proof for an hour ideal temperature for proofing bread is between 90 degrees Fahrenheit and 115 degrees Fahrenheit 115 is usually way too hot so anywhere between 90 and I would say 105 is a really good sweet spot now it's time for the fun part after an hour, your bread should have doubled like so in the bowl. So what you want to do is just take some extra bread flour and we're going to slightly sprinkle a clean surface. Let's do a little bit more. Then have your kitchen scale ready. We're going to turn out the proof bread. It might be a little stuck, but don't worry. Just give it a little gentle nudge and it'll come right out. It's really easy to work with bread if you have a pastry cutter. If you or call a bench scraper if you don't a kitchen knife will work just fine just be careful of the surface you're cutting on so you don't damage it I think it's easier to work with if you have the bread cut in half first now what you want to do is create six oblongs that are about 130 grams each so we're going to just flip that for a second make sure the unit is at grams like so. Then we're just gonna cut. And challah bread is so nice. It's an enriched dough because there's about 90 grams of egg yolk in it. It's gonna become really shiny, really soft, really springy. So we're gonna want about 130 grams per little loaf. So this is about 150. So it's okay to cut off excess and weigh it out because when we shape it, we're gonna have to play with the dough a little bit. So we are almost there. There we go, 130. And we're going to now shape these into mini oblongs. I'm gonna start with the weirdest looking one first so you guys know that it's okay to work with the dough. We're gonna take this, this has three separate pieces. That's totally fine. Cause you're gonna wanna just push down and just make sure the pieces are fully attached to each other and the rest will work its magic because we're going to do a mini proof for these six pieces and is going to be sitting here between 10 to 15 minutes. We give you that time frame because every kitchen and including your environment and your surrounding, the temperature outside plays an important role along with humidity for bread to proof. So you're gonna wanna just, I like to kind of fold it into thirds a little bit just so you have the shape you're looking for. And we're just gonna tuck and roll at the same time, tuck and roll, tuck and roll, and just shape it into an oblong if you have weird seams, just place it face down like that. And then same thing, we're gonna squish this down a little bit and just fold and tuck and tuck and roll. So if you live in Southern California where I am, we're usually pretty lucky. It's not super humid. It's not wet outside at all. So humidity doesn't really play a factor for us. But for those of you Kasurians who live elsewhere in the country, make sure you just take into account of what your weather is like in the kitchen and how it affects your kitchen. Here we are. So if you do have plastic wrap or saran wrap at home, it's not a problem. You can go ahead and just cover it. What we're gonna do is just take a towel it's slightly damp and we're just going to cover it. You're going to let it sit here really nice, really easy, just about 10 to 15 minutes. What you're looking for is they're this big right now. You just want it to be about this big. That's all. All right. When that's ready, we'll come back and we'll shape them into ropes and we'll start braiding. Perfect. They have finished proofing. So you, as you can see, the size didn't change too much. And actually, we're going to keep this here. We're just going to start with one oblong at a time. You're gonna wanna roll it out. It doesn't have to be exact, but hear me out. You're gonna wanna roll it out to 24 inches. So at first it might be kind of weird, but the best way to roll bread is to use two hands. I'm gonna start, and you don't have to push down really hard. It's almost like Play-Doh. That's why I love making bread, you guys. It's very soft, it's very squishy, it's very pliable and malleable and it's just fun to work with. Like if you're an adult, just make some bread. You could like have playtime again, you know, as if you're in preschool and it's really great. So best way to do it is start in the middle and then 
even pressure distribution, open your fingers like so, spread them, and then go from, outside, from inside out. So you're gonna start from the middle and move outwards. So you get an even rope. And you, did you guys see that? See how the bread bounced back? So I let go and that moved in. That's how you know the gluten's fully developed. So this bread, we're using bread flour. So higher gluten content, which means a springier, spongier, softer bread. And it's going to be really light and airy. I love challah bread. Challah bread is so good. I remember the first time I ever had challah bread because personally, I'm not Jewish, but when I was in culinary school, the baking and pastry students, my roommate actually, her name is Gia, so Gia and Mia, we were in the same room together and for baking fundamentals, they had to learn how to make challah bread. And this was also around Hanukkah time too, so it was perfect timing. It was super cold in New York, but I came home from a really long day of culinary class and I just walk into her dorm room and my entire desk is filled with fresh baked challah bread. I was like, what is this? What is this brighted bread? And why does it smell so heavenly? And it was just, it's just so nice to walk into a home smelling fresh bread. So for, the, for those of you who are Jewish and are celebrating the holidays this week, this month, happy holidays. You know, it's such, such a great time to be home, to be with your loved ones. And perfect, I distracted you. Look, 24 inches. We're gonna divide this now into three ropes about eight inches long. Super easy way to do that to make sure you have even strands. We're just gonna fold it over each other. So when you fold it over, obviously that's not eight inches, but because it's bread, we're gonna cut it and we're just gonna, just gonna roll it till it reaches eight inches. Again, more Play-Doh. Same concept, start in the middle, Work your way out and spread your fingers. And there we go, a good strand to help maintain its shape because we got the rest to roll out as well. Just take a pinch of bread flour and just dust the top. So I will just, it's like kind of helps it, but look, it's like harder to roll and it just kind of creates like a, f I, I like to call it like a fake crust because it'll hold the place in shape because when wet, touches dry, the dry flour, it needs a minute to rehydrate and saturate. So it'll actually help you maintain its shape for a little bit longer. And it's a little bit warmer in California. So you see it's starting to proof already. So we just kind of want to work a little bit faster. So like Mia, stop talking so much. Anyways, keep going. And if they're not completely even in width, that's okay. Cause again, we will, we will be working fairly like with this dough working as in like playing with it. You shouldn't play with your food, but if it's hollow bread, I think it's okay. You just wanna do your best to make sure your ropes are even. And if they're not, I promise you, you can just cut it and it'll be fine. All right, so to braid it, you're gonna wanna get three of the equal lengths and you're gonna wanna take the fingertip part and place it at the front and have the pudgier parts at the bottom. You're gonna pinch the top just so it holds its shape a little, then you're going to spread out the ropes like this. And for those of you who like to braid hair, or if you have a daughter or a sister or someone who needs help braiding hair, then you know how to braid. And if not, this is a really, really quick braid. Nothing fancy. You just go left over center and right over center. If your bread is not staying together, that's okay. We just wanna pinch it lightly again so it stays and then it's gonna go fast from here. You just wanna repeat the same process down. For challah bread, you don't want to braid it too tight because when it bakes, you wanna be able to see the braid and see it rise. So when you get to the end, I like to pinch so it ends the braid. You're gonna take the extra strands and tuck under. Same thing, tuck and tuck and you're gonna pinch the egg wash later is gonna help you hold it in place. And, and then you're gonna flip it. So look, the, you fix the end like that. Now, this unbraided portion is the tough part. You're gonna like gently to remove the pinch. So again, it's separated. You have the left, the middle, and the right. 
You're just gonna continue the braid, but kind of the opposite direction. So you maintain the same shape, so the hala is even. Once you reach here, again, you're gonna pinch it so it ends the braid. Take the extra and tuck it under like so. And then we're gonna put it off to the side here. You're gonna dust it with a little bit more bread flour. Then what you wanna do is take the pastry brush, dip it in your egg wash. And for challah bread, what's really important about the egg wash is that you're not using any egg whites. It's just egg yolk. And for this egg wash in particular, you do not add water as well. Brush off the excess here a little bit and then brush the tops completely. So this is the first layer. Then we're going to gently cover it with plastic and let the challah bread rise again with the egg wash on top. Hang on, let's get an even coating here. You wanna make sure it's nice and glossy. And challah bread does come out a little bit darker. So traditionally when we say golden brown and delicious, this is like golden brown and delicious. It's darker, it's... Um, it's, it's not, I don't wanna say burnt because it doesn't look burnt because when you see the finished product, if you guys see it in the background, it's very shiny and very glossy and it's delicious. It's almost as if it has a plastic lacquer on top or if you sprayed it with like acrylic spray, so it's, it's just that shiny. Oop, sorry, tripped on my own tongue there. Yeah, so we're gonna do that. And the reason for the extra dusting of bread flour on top is again, we want the challah bread to retain its braided shape. So when wet dough touches the dry dough, that's gonna help. And then we're gonna put the egg wash on top. That's another, because like when egg yolk hardens, it's kind of custardy. It's almost as if, it's almost like watching the first layer of paint dry. You just wanna make sure it's tacky and it stays and it'll help retain the shape of your challah bread. Now that we have all the braids ready to go, I just wanna show you the difference in the proof. So after you braid them, you're gonna egg wash it, cover with plastic and let it proof to rise for, until doubled for another hour. You're going to re-egg wash the top so we get that really shiny, glossy finish. And then we're gonna head into the air fryer. We've already preheated the air fryer. It's at 300 degrees Fahrenheit and we're going to be baking it for 15 minutes. This part's a little tricky. So be careful, you guys, because this is hot. So I really like our dual basket function. We're going to release the pan from the outer basket. I already put in my piece of parchment paper. Do not preheat your oven with the parchment paper inside. Make sure it's separate so that the heating element doesn't burn the paper. I'm going to take a challah bread and make sure the bottom of the inner basket is lined with parchment paper. And we are going to be able to fit two loaves of challah bread at one time. These are a bit longer and, and bigger. So technically you could do three if they, uh, proof size wise, if they're a little bit smaller than this, you could put fit three because they will not puff as much after being baked. It should be roughly this size, but because I wanna make sure it's perfect for you guys, I'm going to keep it for two. Be inserting that back into the air fryer. Turn it back on. Readjust the time and the temperature. We're going to say that one more time. So it's 300 degrees Fahrenheit at 15 minutes. Press ready, I mean, press play and you're ready to go. And the hala is done. Let's see what it looks like. Wow, look at that. Golden brown and delicious. Again, for easier removal, because remember it's really hot. Dual basket function. And also tongs, make sure they're silicone tips so you don't scratch the air fryer basket. We're just gonna take that out here. Ooh, these look really good, you guys. They're very soft already. And here we are. I just wanted to point out that even though these are beautiful, I think they're great. Traditional challah, 
um, is a little bit more defined in its shape. So personally, I think for me today, depending on your environment and the weather and everything, it will affect the rise of your dough. So I just, I'm going to flip it over for you so you understand what I'm talking about. This challah bread was overproofed, so you don't see the braid. It's not distinct. The bumps are not separated enough, but it's okay because you're still going to eat it. Because look, it's still super moist and ready and delicious. This one is a little bit more defined and you see the bumps more and it's really pretty. I think it's really nice. Like, look at that. The bounce back is really nice. And now we're just going to plate everything up and show you a really nicely decorated table. I'm so excited. Now, once again, it's my favorite time of the day. It's time for the taste test. Ooh, there's just so much to choose from. It's a whole lot of bread. It's so good. Okay, I think, I think I'm gonna go for this one. But before I get into tasting, actually, I pulled one apart to show you guys. Hollow bread is so soft and so springy. It's eggy and delicious. It's already naturally sweet. And when you do get the right definition of each loaf, it's very, actually, it's a beautiful story. The symbolism behind challah is amazing. So traditionally, to garnish your challah bread, which by the way, challah in Hebrew means portion, you would decorate it with poppy seeds or sesame seeds because they represent the manna that fell from heaven. And the three braid challah, the three braids represent truth, justice, and peace. I think that's beautiful for a time during holiday season to be spending time with family and loved ones and friends, it, you don't really have to say anything. You can just gift someone a loaf of challah bread and they know that you love them. Well, anyways, back to tasting. I'm gonna break this open now. Yeah, that's so good. Super springy, super light. The texture is great and I'm so excited to eat it because it's so yummy. Mmm. Naturally sweet, but not buttery, but eggy, but not too much egg. I don't know how to explain it. I just really wish I could reach through the camera and offer you a bite. And it's just fantastic. Like, look at how springy it is. You can pinch it and it pops right back up. And that's the great thing about challah bread too. It's so easy to share. You can literally pull the braids apart and they come undone so easily. It's so fantastic. It's a great addition to your Hanukkah table spread as the centerpiece, as an appetizer or a side. It's fantastic. Thank you so much for watching this video, you guys. Please let me know what your favorite Hanukkah dish is. My favorite Hanukkah dish is actually challah bread, but also latkes. I think latkes are amazing. Please leave your answers in the comments below and we'll see you next time.